what we found, um, again, working with the theorists, of mm -hmm. course, who run these supernova models, is that, uh, so actually, let me, let me, before I get into this, these two stars had huge amounts of carbon relative to iron. So we usually use iron as a reference element mm -hmm. for what we call the metallicity. So the overall um, metal content, the overall amount of heavy elements in it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called uh, iron deficient stuff. That's right. So these stars are incredibly iron deficient, which means they must be of the second generation because there was, and interestingly enough, there was this discrepancy a normal supernovae until then we thought would get us so much iron, you know, and you would distribute that in the gas cloud and then you would form this little star that we're observing. But the iron abundance that we measured was actually much lower than that. And I already mentioned, you can't take things away. That must mean these early massive POP3, we call them population three, the first stars, they must have exploded in a different way than we previously thought. Hmm. They can't output as much iron because they just can't. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't match our observations. Got it. Uh, and so that's when we started to work with uh, several theory groups on on supernova yields. So what comes out of... of from the these, explosion of the supernova? Yeah. That's cool. Supernova yields. And so this one was not yielding much iron. Well, we needed to concoct a theoretical supernova mm -hmm. that made less. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually surprisingly difficult because you can always add more in the universe, right? But you can't take stuff away. Mm -hmm. So uh, Japanese colleagues kind of came up with the idea of a fainter supernova mm -hmm. that just doesn't have a much, is enough oomph, you know, when it explodes. So somehow there's, there's less iron coming out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, then these stars showed huge overabundances of carbon, you know, a thousand times more carbon. So how do you now get a thousand times more carbon out of these poor first supernovae, right? Yeah. That was the theoretical challenge. And because we didn't have just one star, but two, um, that really spurred the field to think about what was the nature of the first stars? How did they explode? What what are the implications? Because if they are not as, as luminous and bright and energetic, that has consequences for, for these early proto-galaxies in, in which, you know, they must have been located in terms of, you know, blowing the gas out, let's say, and disrupting the system. So much higher chance for the, the earlier system to stay intact for longer, mm -hmm. right? So there's a whole tale of consequences. And this is what I mean with we need to find the story because you do... you one thing and it's like mm -hmm. the dominoes that consequences everywhere and suddenly you have a different universe, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so what could possibly be a good explanation for something that that yields a lot of carbon and doesn't yield a lot of iron? Well, it's not so much an, an explanation, more like finding a mechanism for what mm -hmm. happens in supernovae and the, the, the official term, what, what was sort of, as I said, co cooked up in order to, to explain the observations. And we have, by the way, found a whole bunch more of these stars, so mm -hmm. that holds. And it, it's called a fallback mechanism. So actually, in, in the uh, supernova, during the supernova explosion, a massive um, black hole emerges. And so mm -hmm. some of the material falls back onto the black hole. Oh, so boy. here is a, a vacuum cleaner now plopped into the middle, right? Like a temporary one that just cleans up some well, of the elements? Well, sort of, right? Because if you think of the, we haven't talked about this yet, but um, if you if you know what a star looks like, a massive star looks like on its on its on in its interior before it explodes, um, you have hydrogen and helium still on the outskirts and then you have your layers of heavier and heavier elements all the way up to iron. So you have an iron core in the center. Yep. Um, and because you can't get any energy out of iron when you want to fuse to iron atoms anymore, right? That's when the supernova explodes or mm -hmm. occurs, really. It's actually an implosion first and then you have a, a bounce of of the the sort of neutron star phase that 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 occurs in the process and then that is you know so the star awesome. gets, gets disrupted yeah it's like this giant you yeah. know basketball and then yeah. whoa yeah. it all so goes out explosion up. first explosion after. yeah and so awesome in ball. the process right if you make your black hole basically big enough it will suck away some of the iron because that's the closest yeah. in the in terms of the layers you yeah. 
you 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 hold on to it. You don't let it escape. And carbon is much further out. Mm -hmm. You let it all go. Nice. <laughs> and so. So that explains why you can have a big oomph and not much iron yield. Yes. Yes. So, so th is this explain the HE thirteen twenty seven? Correct. Uh, and others like it. Yes. So there's a there's uh, it's well well established now that the lower the iron abundance of the stars are, the higher the carbon sort of gets. Mm -hmm. And carbon is is such an interesting element in that regard. If if we come back to the formation of the first low mass stars, right? Mm -hmm. So we had the the hotter gas, just hydrogen and helium, that made the first stars. They were hundred solar masses or so because it could, the gas couldn't cool enough, mm -hmm. so they were big and puffy. Carbon then coming from the first stars probably led to enough cooling in these gas clouds that enabled the formation of the first low mass stars. Mm -hmm. So think about what happened if there wouldn't have been any carbon or the properties of the carbon atom would be different. Mm -hmm. It would not have cooled the gas in such significant ways, perhaps. There wouldn't be any low mass stars. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here today, right? Oof. And we're carbon-based. And so I think carbon is really the most important element in the universe for, for a variety of reasons because it, it just enabled this whole evolution that, that we're now observing and, and literally seeing in the sky. And it's really fascinating. So combined with the fact that you have the iron deficient, so all of that is probably important to creating humans. Yeah, yeah. We we need all the elements, but if you don't have stars, you know, like the sun, small stars that can actually host planets mm -hmm. that have long lifetimes, you need long, long lifetimes if you want to have a stable planet and, and develop humans. <laughs> so carbon is kind of important in many ways. Yes, yes. 